Thanks, Stephen. Uh, thank you all for uh, showing up here today and uh, for the second day of marathon uh, sessions. Uh, so I want to first welcome you all to Spring Path. Uh, as you all know, we came out of stealth about uh, three weeks ago. Um, so please, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the, 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 the marketing side of things. I know you guys want to go deep. So we have most of the stuff to, uh, set up today to kind of walk you through the technology architecture. And you have the, the core guys here that, that you know, were the foundation behind the company. So. Feel free. Um, I'll do a little bit of uh, you know uh, housekeeping rules in the as part of the agenda, but before I get into that, uh, let me give you a quick snapshot. And this is the it's only working. marketing it's slide you will see. So I'm ha I'm sure you're very happy about that. Um, <laughs> um, so a couple of points of note. Uh, you know, Krishna and Malik are, are the two founders, and Krishna is over there. Malik's over here. Um, these guys are, you know, awesome individuals in the sense that they have done some great things in terms of bringing real products to market, as opposed to what I'd call scientific research, which may or may not see the light of day. Um, you know, Malik was at uh, VMware for about 10 years, where he's worked on a numerous set of, uh, you know, technologies. He holds over 60 patents, and uh, he's the inventor of VXLAN, and he's worked on storage technology since the, you know, beginning of ESX 1.0. So. He knows the stuff. He's obviously built fairly large uh, billions of dollars of the uh, technology out in the market. Uh, Krishna is the architect, one of the core architects for uh, VMFS, which is a core file system behind VMware. Now, join these guys. Uh, you know, these guys, while they're great, they just can't do it all by themselves. So we've got a bunch of folks from a variety of companies that have contributed to you know multitude of uh, features. You'll see that these guys will talk about today. Uh, the, the reason for bringing this up is that it's not easy to build enterprise class solutions, and that's why it was important for me to make sure that you kind of understand that technology is built by a lot of people. This is also what led to the investors you see behind us. Uh, we've got uh, some of the large names in the industry that have you know, making, been making big bets over the last few years to come. And our hope is that we're in that same realm. Uh, and you know, the ideas we have uh, will hopefully will stand the test of time. With that, let me get into housekeeping. Uh, this is the agenda for today's session. Uh, we'll do a quick product flyby. Uh, Ravi's going to do that. And then we'll get into an architecture deep dive with Malik and Krishna. Following that, we'll be doing a demo, so you guys get a hands-on with the Will and Sean doing that for you. And then finally, we'll have a closed session where we can address a lot more detailed questions, which we are not willing to share right now publicly with everybody, but would love to share that with you. So there is a, a segment in here where we may feel that we want to answer some of those questions in the closed session, so please bear with us, and we'll try to defer some of those. And if we don't feel comfortable to answer them publicly, we'll defer them in the closed session. With that, uh, I'll hand over to Ravi. Uh, to start off the product flyby. Hello everyone, thanks for coming. My name is Ravi Parthasarathy, I'm the VP of Product Management. I've been with the team since day one, since the t uh, time the company was started. Uh, I just wanted to, can you get the clicker? <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'll just do a quick flyby, I'll talk about what the product is quickly and talk about the value props that the customers are excited about in our product and, or, and the key features supporting those, key, uh, those value propositions. What SpringPad Data Platform is essentially a storage software that's deployed on commodity servers, servers like Cisco, HP, or Dell that the customers can buy directly from those vendors or through their favorite ch channel partners and deploy an enterprise class storage solution. And this solution basically offers compelling features without compromising on features or availability. There are three key benefits that we believe we offer to our customers. The first is it is an enterprise grade scale out storage solution. Uh, second, it offers maximum simplicity. And third, it's completely 100% software. As a result, it's extremely economical compared to the competitive solutions out there. So I'll go into key features behind each one of these benefits. Uh, please hold on to your questions on those features. We'll be covering a lot more detail in the architecture session, and we'll be answering in, uh, any of those questions you may have. Okay. Firstly, on the enterprise grade part, we spend a lot of time making sure that the data that we write can be read back with high levels of integrity. There is absolutely no data loss, and so we have built a very robust and resilient, highly uh, integ integral uh, solution. The second thing is for high availability, we use mirroring. And also for any resource additions like server additions or drive additions, we do automatic rebalancing. 
Third, we use flash and DRAM memory for delivering high performance. Mainly we use those devices for caching. And on the data management side, we offer native space efficient snapshot and clones. These are pointer based snapshots and clones. And we offer them at a granularity at a file level, which, is, which can be mapped to a VMDK level or a VM level or the upcoming VWALs from VMware. On the storage efficiency side, we offer inline deduplication and inline compression. In addition, because we are using the flash for caching solution and use spinning drives for, capa for the capacity tier, we actually have uh, built a solution where you, the customers can leverage the lowest cost drives. So you don't need to use 10K RPM drives. With the solution, you can actually use 7.2K RPM fat SATA drives. Question. Do you compress data before or after uh, the um, they land on memory and uh, Can we be going into a lot of detail on that on the architecture slide, if you don't mind waiting until then. Thank you. On the management side, so, we leverage existing management tools. Sorry. Sorry. Do you, <coughs> do you de is it turtles all the way down, or do you dedupe the flash and leave the spinning disk hydrated? So, uh, we'll, Howard, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely cover that in the architecture section. Okay. Yeah, if you don't mind. No problem. Just yeah. to make sure we have enough time. Yeah. I, 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 I take, tell you later, no problem. Yeah. Um, this, on the management side, we leverage existing management tools. So, we have not built a separate management console, a web based or client based management console. We use existing management tools like vCenter. So we use whatever storage features that are exposed through vCenter to manage the uh, cluster. Uh, and also any extensions that are missing, any features that are missing in the management tools, we actually offer that as a plugin into those management tools. So we integrate into vCenter for vSphere and the upcoming OpenStack support, we actually integrate into Horizon View also, Horizon. Okay. And uh, since uh, we basically the entire data container is starts with a data store, you don't have to deal with any complexity that you have to deal with in the case of network storage. So there's no LUNs, rate group zoning, any of that stuff here. So it's a very simple, you start with the data store and the data store gets automatically mounted across all the hosts and you can start using it. So it's rapid provisioning of infrastructure and applications. Lastly, uh, very few people have built auto support solutions you know, in, in a completely server-side uh, software solution. So we actually have auto support built into the uh, product that actually sends the data periodically over to our cloud. And the, all the data is actually processed and offered uh, to our customers. So customers can actually use dashboards uh, to view how their systems are performing. And we do a lot of processing and presenting insightful information to the customers so that they can manage their infrastructure. On the software economic side, like I mentioned, this is a completely 100% software solution. It can be deployed on our prescribed servers, Cisco, HP, Dell, and Supermicro. So we have a hardware compatibility <coughs> list that we share with our customers and will be available on our website too. And we support pretty much all the modern generation of servers from these vendors. In terms of the compute platforms that we support, we support in our 1.0 product, we support VMware 5.5 and upward. And we are going to be rolling out a beta OpenStack with KVM next month. And towards the second half of the year, we'll have Hyper-V and container support. We are doing a tech preview of container support right now. In fact, one of the demos will be around container support. In terms of how customers can purchase the software, it is a simple <coughs> annual subscription model on a per server basis, which includes support also. So both features and support on a per year basis. It's as low as $4,000 per year per server. Any type of server, the server can have any amount of cores, $4,000 to the end user. Um, any, any, any number of cores, any amount of capacity, it doesn't matter, okay? And the benefit to the customers is three years down the line, when they upgrade those servers, they can just migrate those subscriptions to those newer servers without having to purchase all of that software again. 
something that you normally do when you're buying an array or an appliance. So you're just upgrading the servers and you're just transferring the subscriptions to those servers. But you are saying that in a, it's an annual subscription. So after three, three years, I paid 12,000 for each one of my servers. Correct. Correct. That's for three years. For three years. That's right. Um, and uh, on the scalability, yeah. uh, you can scale out. Not, you can scale out the storage side, both the storage performance and storage capacity, and you can scale out compute. So you can scale all these three tiers independent of one another. So if your customer just wants to scale the compute side, they can add servers <coughs> filled with no drives or SSDs, and then you can scale out performance with SSDs in them and scale out capacity with hard disk drives. So you can do all of these scaling independent of one another. So and we'll go into a lot more detail on that scalability. But, but do you publish the data store using a standard protocol or do I have to license the servers that consume storage as well as the ones that provide storage? So uh, for, uh, you the licensing is only on the one on the service that consume storage. That consume storage, not not, not support. That, sorry, that, that provides that, that have that provide storage. That okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would have been a very interesting model of the yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the reverse would be interesting. Yeah. yeah. Why not? I'm so, and also okay. in terms of uh, the expenses, you can. It's just-in-time scaling. It's a completely scale-out solution. So you can purchase these nodes just in time and save on capital expenses. <laughs>